elected officials, both Democrats and Republicans, is that services like Medicare, schools, and anything that helps low-income people have to be cut. A new grassroots movement, U.S. Uncut, says that making corporations that abuse tax loopholes and stash money in offshore accounts would be a better option. You're listening to Radio Zine. I'm Marianne Barasonic, and my guests are local organizers for the U.S. Uncut movement, Kevin Smith and Steve Gilliam. Nice to have you both here. Hey, good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you. Now, we've been told over and over that there are no options and services have to be cut. I think the Obama administration is talking about something like $1.1 trillion over the next decade. Can getting taxes from corporations really make up this much? Yeah, you know, a 2008 uh, U.S. Senate investigation found over $100 billion a year is uh, going missing from offshore subsidiaries set up by corporations that dodge their taxes. So I would I would imagine that part of that $1.1 trillion could be made up in, in reclaimed uh, taxes that are dodged each year. Yeah, if it was $100 um, oh, every year, then over 10 years, there's our trillion dollars, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's just what the Senate investigation found. Uh, you know, there's probably a lot more dodging going on than just that one single investigation it found. Well, in, in 2010, uh, corporate tax collections were uh, $191 billion, and that's down 8% from uh, 2000 when it was $207 billion. So uh, we're losing corporate tax revenue through uh, funny business with the tax code and uh, various tax havens that corporations use just to hide their income, basically. Yeah. I'm sorry, and to, and to add to that, uh, you know, the, the, tax, the, the profits of these corporations certainly have not gone down at all in the past few years either. So, um, Well, that's the remarkable thing, isn't it? As the uh, profits go up, we're still not seeing the tax money come in, and then the government keeps saying, oh, well, we're going to have to cut services it makes no sense at all. No, you know, they, they make us share this burden uh, together for the economy being so bad. We're still the wealthiest country in the world. And, and the lower class and the middle class are, are made to pay constantly for this corporate welfare state that we've set up through our uh, elections and our laws and, and various other methods like that. Okay, and we are going to open up the phone lines for calls. If you want to talk to my guests, uh, Steve, Kevin Smith and Steve Gillum from U.S. Uncut, give us a call, 503-231-8187. Um, now, the U.S. Uncut movement is actually uh, 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 something that was started in Great Britain, isn't it? Uh, that's correct. It started out as a U.K. Uncut, uh, about... I believe they're on about their ninth or tenth month at this point. Uh, it's gained an amazing amount of popularity. They were a major part of the the protests a few weeks back. Uh, you know, the UK saw over five hundred thousand people in their streets protesting there, uh, which was their amazing cuts. because we saw pra- we saw nothing of that in the major media. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely seemed to miss the MSNBCs and the and the Fox and CNNs out there. Uh, Whoops! Th- oops. <laughs> uh, they don't seem to be covering the the real popular uprisings at, at this point, unless they have price tags attached to them. So. Now, the U.S. Uncut movement has been called kind of the progressive Tea Party, and and you're making faces at that, and I <laughs> and, and I can understand why, but. Part of the problem is that the Koch brothers have funded the Tea Party, and it's really not a grassroots movement. Is the same true about U.S. Uncut? Is there, where's your funding coming from? Uh, our chapter uh, is primarily funded by Stephen Gilliam and uh, Kevin Smith. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we've been printing out the flyers. Uh, we're, we're completely grassroots, unfunded. Uh, non-centralized, very decentralized. Anyone actually can st- uh, start up an uncut chapter. Just go to the web page and sign up. Uh, they have materials there. You can print out your signs. Um, you'll pay for them, of course. But it, it's very decentralized and very grassroots. It is. This is this is a collective of uh, of just taxpaying citizens that are just tired of seeing these austerity measures trying to be shoved down our throats. Uh, while while we have evidence in front of us that we're being robbed blind by corporations out there. Um, so like Steve said, there's, there's, no, there's no central organization. Uh, it's, it's loose. We've had as little as one people, one person show up at a Bank of America location in Spokane our first week of doing these demonstrations, uh, upwards of you know, 200 showing up in New York on the first. Um, and 
the the movement is is gaining popularity. So the more popularity we have, the more the small cost of printing out signs, flyers, leaflets gets kind of dispersed out uh, amongst the uh, amongst the demonstrators themselves. Okay, and we're going to take a caller. Uh, David, good morning. Hi, how are you? Uh, so, can you hear me okay? Um, you're kind of fading in and out. Uh, okay, how about that? So, uh, so, my thing is that, uh, you know, I think this is an unbelievably great movement. I think this is exactly what needs to be done. Uh, hold these guys. If they're going to be having the laws of personhood, they're going to need to pay by the rules, pay by the rules, and and pay for their crimes, just like the average Joe Blow have to. Um, quick correction on the Tea Party and the fact that I'm not, I'm not pretty radical and liberal, but I'm also conservative, and so I'm a mixture. I'm a pretty much of a nut politically. Um, but the Tea Party was the grassroots movement originally. The Tea Party started out with two men that came out and started a movement against the overtaxation of the United States citizens. Then the corporation saw the movement, felt threatened from the movement, and decided to co-op it. And then they came over and took it over and exploited it and destroyed the movement. And now there's no credibility whatsoever to that movement. So Agreed. That so that's what happened. But, boy, I'll tell you what, these criminals and this welfare state for the rich has got to change before they destroy the country. And you saw on the news uh, that the IMF says by 2015 we are done as the world's power uh, financially. China will overtake us by $3 trillion, and the way they go into holding the, uh, the stirrups. And I'm, I'm concerned about having a communist slave trading country controlling the world monetary system and the rules and regulations on how we do our health. You, you, know, you know, David, I think you have so many excellent points there. It's great because um, we keep getting divided into these uh, labels of conservative or liberal or progressive, and yet when we sit down and talk and we get down to the absolute essentials, we're all saying the same things. That's uh, yeah, and David, you did bring us some, some some great points there. Uh, we, as the U.S. Uncut movement, don't don't think there's any chance of being uh, bought up by by corporations uh, like the Tea Party kind of story kind of went. Um, we're pretty dedicated to making sure that this stays a grassroots movement, and everybody that joins us, each one of our events, sees itself uh, doubled over each time over the the past four we've had now. Right. Um, and, and I also would like to add, I think it's important that we stay out of the constructs of liberal and conservative because it just yes. really limits our, our choices. And it's and it's presented to us for a reason. It's presented to us to provide that left and that right uh, so they can divide us easily. And really, corporations donate the most to Democrats and Republicans. So what, what difference does it make? Right. Exactly. Um, now, who is being targeted by U.S. Uncut and why are they being targeted? Uh, currently, uh, Verizon is kind of top of the list, uh, but the number one culprit would be uh, Bank of America since they've had one of the largest hands in, in home foreclosures uh, and some of their earnings reports. Uh, you know, a few of the facts about Bank of America, they, they've earned, they earned in 2009 $4.4 billion in income, received a $45 billion bailout. Uh, they also have 115 tax havens that they funnel their money through and also took a $1.9 billion uh, tax benefit out of your tax dollars and so, paid zero taxes. So on top of all not that. only did they not pay taxes, but they actually got money back on top of the bailout? To the tune of $1.9 billion, yes. Not yeah, only so. that, but they took some of the bailout money that, that we gave them and some of the money that we lent them at 0.25% and bought U.S. Uh, Treasury bonds with it and that pay out at 3.25%. So they literally took our money and loaned it back to us. Uh, all the while, they're, they're foreclosing on homes. Over 500 foreclosures in the Portland metro area are Bank of America foreclosures. And, yeah. and you know, they're telling us, you don't pay your bill, so get out of your house. Uh, meanwhile, they don't pay their bills, so we give them more money. Right. And even on top of that, mainstream media has even picked up the story that they're falsifying documents all across the country to get these foreclosures done. Um, 60 Minutes did a piece a few weeks back on, on different companies they had actually set up to 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 just production line out, you know, up to 3,500 rubber stamp, rubber stamp uh, these falsified documents, which uh, courts in Florida are now throwing out 
these uh, foreclosure cases and awarding the homes to the homeowners. Um, so Bank of America is is number one target right now. But you know we have we have lists that have just been populated all over the place. Uh, General Electric obviously is a, is a large one. Yeah, uh, John Stewart did a great piece on General Electric, mm-hmm. which was really surprising because his network is owned by General Electric. Which is true, and uh, your listener is probably a little more in tune than than most uh, most Americans out there. But yeah, General Electric does own quite a bit of the networks. They're one of the five corporations that own 96% of everything that we read, see, and hear on television. And they also spent, over the last five years, $205 million on lobbying. $205 million on lobbying in the last five years. That's incredible. Which is a small number when you put it up against the $26 billion in profit that they make and then the $4.1 billion tax credit that we give them. But they got um, a great return on their investment. Great return. Oh, sure they did. They even So great they actually got a, a, their CEO in the White House. Right. You know, and we're going to take another caller. John, good morning. Good morning, John. Good morning. Uh, uh, great show. And I'm a member of KBU and encourage anybody out there that's listening that likes your topic, hey, please donate to all the rest of us at KBU here. Anyway, my uh, comments are uh, my big uh, dilemma all the time, and I'm in my mid-60s, and it seems like I've seen this movie, you know, uh, about a dozen times now. But this winner-take-all system that we have, we don't have any proportional representation. So I think over the years that, our best bet is to try and take over the Democratic Party at the grassroots level, because we got to be realistic about getting power. If, uh, say, for instance, if the polls are really close between the Democrats and the Republicans, these Republicans, all we have to do is look at Wisconsin, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Florida. They are so far right, uh, they're super dangerous. Uh, they want to, I don't know if you follow the story in Wisconsin, but they want to eliminate every social safety net, unions. So, uh, even even the child labor laws. Right. Yeah, really, and, and uh, minimum wage laws. They don't want any of this stuff. And uh, obviously they fool the people and then get in, and hopefully they'll they've shown themselves for what they really are. So it's back to the lesser of two evils, and I think if enough of us vote, uh, and get out and vote and become voter activists, the more of us that vote, the more we can push the Democratic Party in a progressive direction, hopefully similar to what happened with FDR and the Depression. Yeah. Right. Hey, John, I-, I think you're right, but you have to do more than just get out there and vote because oh, we're sure present. I yeah, I understand, but some of us, you know, are, can only do so much. But, sure. But I want to always bring that up because. It's so easy to get cynical and pessimistic and say, oh, they're both the same, the Democrats, the Republicans, who cares, you know, or vote uh, independent, green, uh, whatever. But, hey, if we don't watch the polls, then it's a vote for the Republicans. They want us to vote. They want to divide us and uh, conquer. So my big point is if the polls are close, I think we have to vote Democrat and then get involved in a Democratic Party. Uh, as the only solution with the the system we have where winner takes all and everybody else is a loser like an NBA championship or whatever right but well I, you know I was I'm born and raised a democrat and I'm also a member of the democratic party uh but I think we have to realize that the the people presented to us are presented to us for a reason when we have that choice and you say it's the lesser of two evils well the lesser of the two evils more often than not is incapable or unwilling to uh make the change that we need uh, and so you can't just go out there and vote and say we're going to vote for X Democrat because there's a D by the name. Um, you're going to have to make sure your your groomed and recruited uh, elected officials uh, are standard bearers uh, for pro- progressive values before you just say I'm going to check D because it's not R. Uh, that's kind of what got us into this mess now. When corporate money controls the system, you have to realize that certain people are attached to that system and attached to that corporate money, and, and you can't just rubber stamp a Democrat. I definitely understand what you say. Voting is important. Uh, but you have to be active in the party or you, you have to hold an accountability and you have to be willing to say, no, I'm not going to vote for you just because you're not as bad as a Republican. So uh, part of why are we in this position where um, the government it keeps saying, well, we can't provide any social services and the uh, Corporations aren't bringing in any tax money. Because we haven't demanded that they do otherwise. 
And that's what we're about. And that's why on Saturday on 37th and Hawthorne, we'll be down at the Bank of America. And we're going to say, um, if you're not going to pay your taxes, if you're not going to contribute to the society that you profit off of, uh, we're not going to let you make your money here. And we're going to go down to that Bank of America. And we're going to stand out front. Uh, we're going to go inside. And we're not going to let them make money for that little bit of time. And that's going to send a message. It is. Yeah, this is this is above, uh, like Steve said, just just uh, voting for a D on a on a punch card at, at some point. This is actually the, the people standing up uh, for what we're watching happen, even in the mainstream media at this point, uh, that is going on with our taxes and, and the cuts that are being made. And our simple message is, is uh, chop from the top. You know, stop taking away from us that are paying our taxes uh, to redistribute to, you know, the, uh, to the corporations and the CEOs and, and the sorts. Okay, you're listening to Radio Zine. My guests are Kevin Smith and Steve Gilliam from U.S. Uncut. And we're going to take another call. Joe, good morning. Good morning, A. The last uh, true Republican that we had was uh, Dwight David Eisenhower. Ever since then, they've been repigly cons because they're so greedy and piggy that even a pig would be uh, astounded at their greed. But uh, the bottom line is, is check out uh, what I wanted to say was, uh, I believe Bernie Sanders, who's an independent senator from Vermont, for the people that don't know, he has uh, proof that shows, and his website, by the way, I guess, and I don't own a computer, but is uh, senate.sanders.gov, because I listen to him on the radio and also on C-SPAN. But he has proof, and I can't remember, the number was quite astounding. It was either 800 or 8,000. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's even just eight. Uh, well, major I, corporations that have a address in the Cayman Islands, they all use the same address in the Cayman Islands to avoid paying any U.S. taxes whatsoever. I think, that, Steve, that's one of the big issues for U.S. Uncut, isn't it? The offshore accounts? It is, yeah. We're, we're learning all these major corporations just have hundreds of subsidiaries or, you know, uh, or companies they're doing business under other, other names in the Cayman Islands. I mean, all over the world, really, that allows them to funnel their, their profits away from the United States. Right. And, and they complain about the U.S. corporate tax rate being 35%. Right. But effectively, the top 2,000 uh, companies, they only paid a shade under 15% on their income because of all the loopholes. So we have a high uh, statutory rate, but the effective rate is very low. Yeah, and as the USUncut.org movement kind of built, we're going after the, the main ones, but the, the most important number to remember is two-thirds of corporations in America are dodging their taxes in one form or another. So this isn't just the big, huge corporations, but this starts getting down into the smaller... Two-thirds? Corpor- two-thirds is the, is the statistic. It's, I, Pay I have no... no- Pay no tax at all? Or uh, just no or little. No, no or, or little. circumvent it in one, one fashion or another. Um, you know, FedEx is also kind of guilty of it. Um, you know. Well, wouldn't well, it be better to be addressing the tax code rather than um, picketing at places like Bank of America? Because aren't they just well, taking advantage of what's already there? You know, in... in, in I uh, hate to put these words out there, but in corporate defense, I suppose they are just taking advantage of these tax codes. But we've been kind of asking for tax uh, code changes well, for decades now, and it, and it doesn't seem to be happening. We we all voted for the change. and Right. The problem is that the politicians are controlled by the corporations. I don't think that's any secret. Uh, right. We live in a corporatocracy. Uh, you, you can try and change the tax code, but someone's just going to get around it. They have teams of accountants and lawyers and lobbyists. And as citizens, we don't have the time, energy, or, or money to be fighting these tax code battles. We need to put pressure on the politicians. Uh, we need to reform our election system. But more importantly, we just need to demand action. We need to uh, express our anger in a way that is not uh, inside at our coffee table talking to our close friends. We need to be publicly outraged, civil disobedience, nonviolent, uh, but firm, and we need to demand results. And like I said, Saturday, 930, we're going to be at the Bank of America on 37th and Hawthorne, so we'd love to have you down there. Absolutely. And these type of, this, this movement, uh, we've had uh, children in, in strollers all the way to you know senior citizens. This is just a, a taxpayer's movement. This has no specific uh, genre of people. Uh, it's actually a bipartisan uh, issue, you know, uh, Glenn Beck would have it otherwise that this is some sort of a real <laughs> radical group, uh, but it's not. It's a, We actually welcome people to go to YouTube and do a, a YouTube search for U.S. Uncut to see what the actions actually look like. Um, this is kind of a, a heavily online-based movement, so a lot of, uh, a lot of videos and, and pictures online. Of, yes, of we're also on Twitter. Or excuse me. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash pdxuncut. 
And on Twitter, we're at U.S. Uncut PDX. How effective has this been nationally? Uh, well, if you go by the numbers of, uh, of protests, uh, the first week, which was uh, what were we, two months ago on our yeah, first 26. on our first action, uh, we had about seventy five to eighty five people show up here in Portland. There was, I think, fifty five or sixty different actions across the nation, uh, and we've grown last weekend, or I'm sorry, uh, two week tax day on the on the fifteenth, right. uh, saw one hundred and forty five different protests across the nation. Um, and again, those are everywhere from, from five people at small towns, you know, small southern towns. And I, I think New York had an amazing showing. We actually had a decent showing here of probably 90 to 100 folks that showed up on a Monday afternoon. Right. To, and to we're come. getting attention in the nation, um, Truth Out, Huffington Post, um, everywhere. And, you know, people are, are shutting down banks, and it's, it's really gaining momentum very rapidly, just as it did in the U.K., um, it's a very nonpartisan message. It's it's a message that you should be outraged. They're stealing from us and they're taking advantage of us. And meanwhile, we're closing schools and, yeah. and right. laying off teachers and firefighters and policemen and and we're fighting wars for them. Yeah, you know it, this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is on top of a war economy where I think it's fifty one or fifty two cents out of each one of our tax dollars is paying for one illegal war or another. Um, so all these measures are coming on top of that. So you know when we say this movement has gained popularity, it's being backed by by the unions. It's, uh, you know, veterans just about for veterans for peace have a heavy hand in all of this. Um, so this is not just a single left type of issue. This is a, this is a taxpayer issue. Right. And now the yes men did um, a, a good spoof on GE, didn't they? Yes, when they said GE was going to give back the money and, and the Associated Press ran with it. That was, that was awesome. We love the yes men. Yeah. yeah, well, that was great because they were able to take clips of their CEO saying things like that he needed to be responsible for the country that, you know, supports them and all this kind of stuff. And he, they were able to take his own words, patch them together, and make this completely believable um, press clip. And I think that's why the mainstream media picked it up, because it, it was legit. his own words. Yeah, yeah sure. exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's a, you know, and, and part of the U.S. Uncut movement, we're out there having fun. These aren't, you know, uh, you know, we use the term get angry a little bit here because of these austerity measures and, and the truth we're learning about the corporate tax evasions. But this really is just a fun, fun movement. Uh, again, on Saturday, you know, uh, it's your chance to take back a little, you know, it, it's it's your chance to to not stand outside uh, with the same old, same old and hold signs and look crazy. It's your time to, to take back a little bit and get a little bit of attention um, to what's really going on and getting more people upset. That's how you build momentum. You know, it, it's, a, it's a fun movement. Uh, we need more participation. Uh, so let's get on board. Saturday. It is. And, and, and the Portland chapter here has, has done really well at actually kind mm -hmm. of promoting uh, moving your money locally, moving more to credit unions, getting away from the big banks that are not only dodging their taxes, but they're, they're hitting us in other, uh, other types of ways with their fees. And uh, you know, if you knew, I don't have the numbers here in front of me on the annual fees from overdrafts, but you know, we've had multiple, multiple um, class action lawsuits against some of the big banks for their systematic thievery of, of their account holders by uh, overdraft, you know, I'm sorry, I can't think of the words. Ridiculous fees. <laughs> yeah, the ridiculous yeah. fees, yeah. But so this is... That um, goes along with part of the um, influencing the rules because they go in, they lobby, they get it yeah. so that these things that should be illegal wind up being business as usual. Right. Yeah. And, you know, when we when we talk about lobbying, it's not just that. We have, you know, 1,147 uh, congressional aides or congressmen in 2009 alone went directly from Congress to the financial industry. So we have a revolving door of politicians mm -hmm. in Washington that are helping the financial institutions get these laws passed and these corporate loopholes passed. So this is this is infiltrated to the highest levels of, right. of now, cronyism at this point. U.S. Uncut is only a couple of how how old is U.S. Uncut? I mean, it's not even about a year. Two months. About, about two months. About two months. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's been growing very rapidly. Has there been any signs that Bank of America is feeling? Any sort of pinch? Well, they now station security guards outside of their banks because they know we're coming. Yeah. Um, they have kind of procedures, anti-activist procedures that they put in place. Um, I think they're trying to not make a big stink of it yet and hope that we go away. But uh, we're not going away. 
Yeah, there's. Uh, I I don't remember exactly what the statistics were, but they just had released uh, some of their earnings reports, and they were down a little bit. And we'd like to think that maybe we played a little bit of a role in that. Um, but that's an incredible amount of growth in two months to get 150 different actions across the country. In that short amount of time, that's pretty incredible. You know, I think that really speaks to the temperature of the country right now and where people are at um, with both political parties at this point and, and the measures that they're trying to pass and what they're trying to pass on to us. Or, it, uh, it's just take away egregious, from us. really. Um, we, we really haven't even felt at the state level the, the effects of all the budget cuts yet. Uh, these next two years are, are going to be horrible for people. And... Uh, the bad guys are the big corporations that we kind of are forced to going to because they're kind of monopolies. You know, the six largest banks hold 60 percent of all deposits in the U.S. Um, you know, people, we need to move our money. We need to be uh, very conscious of shopping locally, even if it costs us an extra dollar on the front end, because on the back end, it's going to save us way more. Right. Well, and this pinching on the state level is part of the same uh, policies, because as the federal government cut programs, then the states had more pressure on them right. to pick up the policies. And also, as the federal government pulls more tax money out of people because it's going off to feeding this war machine, mm -hmm. then the money, you know, people are feeling the pinch and they're saying, wait a minute, I don't want to pay my state taxes. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and it has people mad at the government for, for taxing them uh, when really they should be mad at the corporations. Uh, you can be mad at the government, too, actually. Be mad at the government. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with <laughs> but that. But be mad at the corporations because uh, the corporations and the super rich um, have cashed out the American dream and they're taking it for themselves. So time to go get it back. Saturday, 930, 37th and Hawthorne. Bank of America. Yeah, we'll have uh, spare signs. Anybody that wants to drop in, come in for a minute or two and, and, and sing some chants with us. Okay, well, you've been listening to Radio Zine. I'm Marianne Barasonic, and my guests have been Kevin Smith and Steve Gilliam from U.S. Uncut here in Portland. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much for the time.